Hi, it's Eleanor from Birthsang and I wanted to answer a question that I've been asked around my thoughts around helping a baby to establish a routine. And, you know, I really, um, I think it's such a brilliant question because we have this kind of idea um, that babies should follow a routine. And it's quite ingrained in us. And I think it comes from a place because we all as adults um, and children, um, to a certain extent, thrive on routine. We like to have a predictableness about when we get out of bed in the morning. We have little routines around the way that we have breakfast. We get we, we, whether we have a shower first or, you know, even when we're getting dressed, we tend to put our clothes on in the same order. And that will go out throughout your whole day, throughout your week. And we feel very safe and secure when we know the structure around which our life is based. And the problem is babies haven't read any books. And there are lots of advocates out there for uh, people who really believe that, you know, a baby should um, follow a routine that the routine should be in a very specific time frame with a specific order of what they should be doing in what order, um, how long they should be sleeping, when they should be going to bed, when they should be waking up, all of this kind of stuff. And I um, found with my first baby, I was very much a believer in the routine. And I didn't really agree with sort of Gina Ford, who is at quite, um, it's she's at the end of the spectrum that's quite rigid in her thinking. Three hour routine for this, feed at this time, you know, it's very rigid. And I didn't really feel that it was necessarily that important to be that rigid, but I also kind of subscribed to this idea that routine was important to impose on your child. And my first baby was very erratic um, and he would nap all times, he would nap, for different amounts of times, although mostly very short. Um, it, it, it was, it, yeah, erratic's the best word. I mean, he really was unpredictable. He was all over the place. And after a difficult and frankly quite traumatic birth and having quite a long amount of time for me to physically recover after birth, by about six weeks after he was born, I was in a complete state and he was uh, we weren't able to go to bed because he was up really late and we thought, right, this is ridiculous. We need to impose a routine. And I had this brilliant book that I thought was brilliant that said, well, you should have your baby should nap this amount of time and then you should feed them and then have a bit of a wait time. And then you should put them down for a nap and they should nap for this time and you put them to sleep in this way. And he didn't do any of that. And every time he failed to meet the expectations of the routine, it made me feel worse and worse and worse. And in fact, the only thing that really made a big difference for us with my first child was around that six to eight week period. We imposed nighttime and daytime. And what that meant was at 7 p.m. Um, he was put to bed. But that meant, that meant that we had a bath <laughs> and we put him in night clothes um, and we, we put him in a dark room. And that he stayed in that dark room. And if we if he got up for a feed or if his nappy needed changed, we kept the lights really dim. We didn't really talk very much. And we tried to be like, this is night time. And then at 7 a.m., no matter what had happened the night before, whether or not we'd been up every hour all night and were completely broken and they just finally got to sleep, we got up every day at 7 a.m. And we kind of like got fresh clothes on and got up and had breakfast. And we were like, this is daytime. And he napped outside of the dark room and we had the lights on and all of that stuff. So that's the only amount of routine we managed to impose. And it did really help because it did mean that in the evenings we were able to put him down for a bit and just wake up again. And I'd have to feed him and that periodically throughout the night. But it kind of felt like we had some time to ourselves in the evening that we could say, yeah, this is two hours we've got between eight and nine or eight and ten o'clock where we can kind of sit down and kind of go and then go to bed so it, it it worked from that point of view but that was the only part of that routine that my son would allow us to adhere to and he was totally erratic he would only sleep for half an hour all the books said your baby should be sleeping for 90 minutes two hours 
never. And it was it was probably around a year before he started to nap on a regular basis at a regular time and have more predictable routine. And that was probably because of the weaning process. So now he was having breakfast, lunch um, and an evening meal. Um, as well as being breastfed, but also he had this sort of structure to his day a bit more. Now, I felt like a terrible parent. I thought that I had got it all wrong and I was doing it wrong and that my methods just weren't working. And in actual fact, when I had my second child, it was a complete revelation because she, you could like absolutely run your clock by her. She would wake up at 7am each morning, would feed and nappy and all of that stuff. And then she would get tired and fall asleep at 9.30 and would sleep for about two hours and then she'd wake up. And like every single day she had this really, really clear routine. And I didn't, I never had to impose a routine on her because she just regulated herself in that way and she found that pattern and for her, that was who she was. And do you know, the biggest revelation for me was that actually it wasn't me. It wasn't me being a terrible parent that first time. It wasn't that my child was bad or I was a failing as a parent. Because the fundamental thing I realised was that every baby brings with them a personality and preferences. And just like as adults, some of us are night people, some of us are morning people, some of us, you know, find that they wake up and it takes you an hour to come to consciousness and other people bing out of bed and like, ah! you know, there's all kinds of ways that we're totally different people. And babies are totally different people. And I realised when I had my second daughter, who thankfully did have a predictable routine, that it completely depends on your baby. So if, you're, if your baby is quite little, perhaps they're under three months and you're thinking, oh my God, it just feels like really chaotic. I just need a routine. I totally get it. And I completely understand it. And feel free to introduce a routine. See if you can find something that works for you and works for your baby. But if your baby doesn't want to follow that routine, don't get hung up on it. Don't think that it's something that you're doing wrong or something that they're doing wrong, because actually all babies are different. And it may be that they never really get into a routine and that's okay. And it could be that they click right into a routine as soon as you try to kind of guide them into one. And that's okay too, because all babies are completely different and how well or not your baby adapts to a routine is in no way um, an indication of you as a parent. And I know that you are doing everything you can to the best of your ability to provide your baby with food and comfort and warmth and all of covering all of their basic needs. Make sure you're covering all your basic needs as well and you will do fine. So these are my thoughts on routines. Um, please feel free to uh, let me know if the routine has worked for you and any books that you might have read or websites that have been really useful on this subject or whether your baby didn't like a routine either, please feel free to drop them in the comments or send me a message. I'm really interested to hear what worked for you. But my overriding message is don't sweat it if they don't want it. Survival is most important and whatever works for you and your baby is absolutely perfect for you and your baby.